a lot of what we read about in the newspapers is there is no oil left, we're running out of oil and gas. Well, in effect, we have huge potential reserves still underneath our ground here domestically, but it's going to take uh, technology and advancements to extract those mature hydrocarbons. We can't keep these wells going with 1920s, 1940s technology. We have to think differently. We have to do something different. The reservoirs that were produced 50 years ago were the easy reservoirs to drill into. Now we're faced with harder reservoirs to drill. We have to come up with new technologies to be able to produce these reservoirs. We are doing, as an industry, a very poor job of getting those resources in the ground to the surface. We only get a third of it out of the ground on average. We're leaving two thirds behind. So if we can find new technologies to be able to get more of that oil out of the ground, keep these wells operating longer, that resource is tremendous. That's in the billions of barrels of oil uh, just in the United States alone. There's an increasing demand in the United States and then other countries, China's developing, uh, South America, Africa, so that the energy demand of the whole world is increasing. And along with conservation, I think we have to investigate every method to increase the production. There are about 2,000 to 2,500 wells a year plugged in the United States that are termed stripper wells. It's important that those wells stay open because once they're plugged, they're gone. It's not economically feasible to go in and open those wells up. But by using new technologies, technologies that come from the universities or various uh, research that's funded by government efforts, it helps keep these wells in production. Now, with prices the way they are, they have enough money to where they can look at new technology, they can maybe make more production out of that well, they can do some things that they couldn't afford to do in the past that's going to help put more production into the system here in the United States. So when I look at the price of oil right now, it, it hurts me too when I have to go pay for that at the pump. But I also realize that it's helping the health of the infrastructure of oil and gas production in the United States, and that is very important to everybody in the United States to keep that happening. As operators, we constantly look at ways to do the operation better. In our operations, we've looked at new type of pumps to be able to do it uh, more efficiently uh, with less breakdown and using less energy. There has been, in recent years, technology that's been introduced to the oil and gas business that larger independents have benefited from, and they're starting to trickle down into smaller and smaller operations such as mine. Many of these things didn't exist or were practical at all 10 to 15 years ago. There's going to be ways to use this technology in other industries that uh, will become apparent as the testing goes on, and as, as we bring the technology out to the field, somebody's going to recognize. We're going to be able to use that in open heart surgery. We were building an oil and gas pump, and it certainly uh, was the farthest thing from our mind using this as, a, as an artificial heart or a heart assist device or anything medical. But we, we realized after building it, the similarities that we had were so close to the human heart that we felt that it had potential in the, in the medical community. This is the little two-inch version that we used at Texas Heart Institute. This was in a live animal test that we actually put in an animal and, and kept the animal alive for five and a half hours. It functions a lot like the human heart because it's got two pumps in one. It's got a right side and a left side. The blood never stops turning because it's all swept volume. And even though it pulses, it doesn't have time to stop and coagulate and cause any thrombosis or anything. The human heart is probably the most efficient pump. I mean, God made that. It's, it's a very efficient pump. And to have one that we can build the same size and be able to do the same volume and to give them the same pulse is, is just, it's incredible. There are places in West Texas that fresh water is a very precious commodity. So Dr. Burnett's research has a dual role. Not only can it help dispose of brine produced out of natural gas wells, but it's also uh, uh, providing another means of fresh water for the local communities. 
The water that comes to the surface with the oil and the gas or in these batteries, we take the water, once it's separated, but it's very salty and it has contaminants, and we're planning to treat it with our desalination trailer. Now in the oil and gas industry, we talk about barrels, 42 gallons. We're paying $2 to $3 per barrel to haul this water off. Well, this trailer can treat and, and desalinate and make fresh, pure water for half that. I can take 10%, maybe a third of the water they take off, but turn it over to the ranchers, the landowners here, to use for some sort of a beneficial use. And that's the exciting part, is that you have a byproduct that's coming out of the oil and gas industry that now is looked at not just waste, but as an alternative use for the betterment of the area. So regardless of what type